Hello, yeah, my name is uh, Ken Create. I'm an evangelist. Uh, the last episode I did with uh, James Madonna, Mega Life 21, we did an interview. Now I want to teach you the word and what God says. Our topic for today is the last days and living in the spirit. So we will go to, if you have your Bibles, you will turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is the dangers of the last days. You should also know, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful, proud, scuffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and have no interest in what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love for pleasures rather than God. They will act as though they are religious. They will reject the power. That could make them godly. You must stay away from these people. Now, this is what's going on in the United States today. Now, I want to go to Galatians chapter 5. Let me turn there. Just give me a second. This is the Word of God. This is not Ken Creates teaching. When we did that interview, I was just talking to you through things I've been through and also talking about the Word of God. Now I'm in the Word of God. So now we go to chapter 5 and we're going to go with the flesh versus the spirit. Chapter 5. Verse 19, these are the works of the flesh, fornication, that means unlawful, sex between two unmarried people, uncleanness, we're talking filthy, we're talking drugs, levishness, that's lustful, wrath, you know what that is, it's rage, it's violent, it's anger, strife. Rivalries, conflicts, seductions, rebellions against authority, heresies, a doctor's opinion about religion, vainglory, it's vanity, it's pride, it's empty. Now we will go to the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, patience. If you live by the Spirit, then let's walk by it. Now, we're going to break this down because people think we're living in the last days. But like I said, when the message was given to Paul, the grace message, that was the beginning of the last days. Now, where we are at today is we are a second away from midnight. Now, when you look at these things, what's going on in the United States today, but it's going all around the world. It's all dealing with the flesh. You see, the devil knows how to operate, and the way he works is he'll work through the money, the work through the fashion, entertainment, he will work through sports, he works through the job, he will work through religion. In fact, right now he's working through the body of Christ, because the Bible says that he becomes an angel of light to deceive the elect. The elect are the believers. So what Satan wants to do is if you're on fire for Christ, he wants to get you, your eyes off of Christ and be focused on you in the world. So anybody who's focused on Christ he is going to attack you. 
24-7. Now, you as a believer, if you're walking in the flesh, like Galatians describes, he looks at you. You're no threat to him because you're walking in the flesh. So he basically says, let's keep an eye on that guy. But it's them other Christians. We have to attack them. So how do we attack them? Well, we're going to attack them by telling them what it was like in their past when they lived as the old man. Aren't you missing out on these things? Look, your friends are having a good time. Why are you reading the Bible? You can go, you could be out there having a good time like everybody else. He's going to distract us. If you like sports and you're a believer, he's going to try to keep you away from the Word of God. How's he going to do that? Well, give me an example. Say you like football and your favorite team's the New York Giants. And you watch them every Sunday when you come home from church. There's really nothing there, but really there is nothing wrong with watching a football game. But after that football game and say your team loses, do you get bent out of shape and think about that for three days? Or do you look at it and say the game's over? That enjoyment's over. Now let me get down to business. Let me keep my eyes on Christ. Or do you get distracted and think about that game? Now, you're going into the nighttime and something's coming on in sports. And you like your sports. And you watch, start watching highlights or a basketball game comes on and you get caught up in the basketball game. Now, you look at your clock and it's like, okay, uh, I got to go to bed. So now you lay in bed. Do you pray before you go to bed or do you hop in bed and you fall asleep? And then you wake up to go to work. So the way the devil wants to operate is whatever you like to do in the flesh, that's where he's going to attack you. So at the end of the day, the devil looks at you and says, you didn't have your eyes on Christ. You weren't buried in this book. You weren't praying. You were watching the sports. You see, you got to realize one thing. He is a defeated foe. And we are covered by the blood of Christ. That's if you are a believer. So he's defeated. That's not the problem. Where the problem lies at the end of the day, did he have victory over you in your flesh? Because if he had victory over you, in your flesh, he's laughing at you. He's mocking you. He's keeping your eyes off of Christ. This is what he does. And that is just an example with sports. You could go to something else. You can go to, you like cars. You're a believer. You have a nice car. But you see your neighbor or somebody you know has a fancier car. You become envious of this individual. And that's where the flesh comes in. Pride. I want what he has. I'm going to buy what he has. He's getting attention and I'm not getting attention. So I'm going to buy what he has. So everybody can look at me. Look at my car. And I'm a somebody. See, that's the problem with people today. In the body of Christ. They want their friends and everybody to look at them. Wow, look what Larry's got. Wow, he must be really blessed. But you see, when you get caught up with these things and you get what your neighbor has, then all of a sudden, you're taking your eyes off of Christ. And when you take your eyes off of Christ and you're putting your mind more occupied on that material car because, let's face it, people, that's only material. And if you get in a car crash, your car can be destroyed. It goes in the junkyard. That's where it ends up anyway. So if you get caught up with your car and you wash it and you vacuum it and everything's sparkling and you drive around your neighborhood and all your friends and people are looking at your car and even if you pull over, wow, that car is great. 
Okay. Wow. Good luck with that. That's not a problem. But when you start to look at that car and you say, wow, look at my car. Wow. Look what I got. Look what I got. Okay. That's when you start to take your eyes off of Christ. And like I said, the devil is going to do whatever he possibly can do to keep your eyes off of Christ. Now, when it comes to unsaved people that don't know Christ as their Savior, they live in the flesh. And you are seeing it today. Because like I said, we look and say, are we living in the last days? We're past the last days. We're a minute or a second before midnight. Christ is ready to return. So these people who are lost, the Bible says, Every day that goes by, their heart becomes harder and harder, meaning they're waxing harder and harder. And when Christ knocks at their door, every time they refuse to accept Christ and trust in Christ as their Savior, their heart is getting harder and harder. And this is where unsaved people, lost people are at. Now, I'm sure... Believers out there know what I'm talking about. I mean, do you ever call up one of your friends and see if they can help you out because you're in a bind and you get their voice machine and they never call you back? Or do you get in contact with one of your friends and one of your friends says, yeah, I'll come and pick you up in 15 minutes, okay? And they come an hour later, okay? They're lying to you. And, and instead of them saying, look, I'm running a little late. I said I'd be there in 15 minutes. I'm not going to come for a half hour. So instead of you waiting around, you know exactly what time they're going to come or they're going to call you before you come. But you're in a time frame. Okay, that's a good thing. But when they say they're coming at a certain time and they show up an hour later, they're lying to you. And then you say, why'd you come late? And then if you explain that to them, they're looking at you. I'm not a liar. I showed up. So you see, we like to cover up our sins. If you say something, stick to it. I mean, me as an entertainer performing, after I was done, I had people came up to me. And I had individual, hey, give me your card. Give me your card. You do kid shows. You do this. I said, absolutely. So I'm going to call you. They never called. So what were they doing? Were they putting a show on in front of their friends to make them look good? How come they never called? Or somebody gave me their card and said, call me. And I would call. And there was no callback. What's that about? Be real. Don't be fake. But this is where we are at. You look at everything in the flesh. And what I read to you, when you go into Timothy, it says, wild parties. Isn't what these young kids do today? I mean, I remember in my past, when I partied with my friends, I had to be with my friends. I had to be with my group. So if I was strung out on drugs, I had to be with the people that were strung on drugs too. Because once I went out of that surrounding and even walked into a bar, I felt uncomfortable. Because these people weren't doing the drugs I was doing. So I had to be with my friends. And now when you're hanging out with your friends and there's other people that come in, all right, you want them to enjoy what you're doing. This is how the devil operates. It works through the drugs. It works through the booze. It works through fashion. It works through entertainment. It works through sports. They'll work through cars, boats, material things. He wants to get your mind occupied on other things. Now, if you're lost, this is what you do. You're blind. You're lost. But to believers out there, are you getting caught up with the flesh? Now, if you're getting caught up with the flesh, and if you say to certain believers, Christ can return any minute, they're sleeping. 
they're not alert. They see everything going on, but they're like, oh, that's been going on for thousands of years. Christ ain't going to return in my time. Or it might be 50 years, or I might be gone. When you have that attitude, you're taking your mind off of Christ, and you're walking like the world. That's not good. You should know Christ is ready to appear. I know for myself, when Christ is ready to appear, he can appear at any minute because we're right there. I want to be alert. I want to be ready. Meaning, when he calls me home in the rapture, I was in his word. I was praying without ceasing, or I was in fellowship, or I was listening to a preacher, or I was out witnessing to somebody, or I was edifying the body of Christ. I was motivating somebody. I was teaching somebody. And that twinkling of an eye, when I'm gone, I had my eyes on Christ. I don't want to be where Christ is ready to return. And it was like I was watching a garbage show. I was smoking a joint. I was in the bar having a beer. I was hanging out with my friends. I was watching sports. I was reading. I was listening to garbage music off guard. I don't want to be caught off guard. You see, what it really comes down to, God uses his children in different ways. You have preachers out there. You have pastors out there. But like I said, a pastor is the head of the flock. We don't have enough people behind the pulpit who are teaching people the word of God. Because when I walk into fellowship and I was going, my pastor was teaching me the word of God. So it was like I was almost going to school. Now I want to share this other thing with you. I'm hanging out with my friend. We meet another individual. So we're doing a show. And he says to me and my friend, I can help you out. Why don't you come to where I go to church? And the people in the church can help you out. So me and my friend said, fine. So I said to this individual, look, when I come in, could I introduce myself? Absolutely. Raise your hand. I says, well, then could I say a testimony? He says, no, we don't do that. I said, well, I'm not coming to your church. So he says to me, why not? I says, because you don't understand the word of God. When you have fellowship with other believers, the Bible says build each other up, edify each other, share with each other. So when I was going into fellowship in the body of Christ and my pastor would say, does anybody want to share something with us? Somebody raised their hand. I said, you know, pastor, I was reading this in the Bible. Wow, I'm really starting to understand that. My pastor says, okay. So now what that individual is doing is edifying the body of Christ, the believers that are sitting there, motivating them, showing something that God showed them that other believers in fellowship might not know. And then somebody else raises their hand and they say, you know, I ran into this lady today. I was in the A&P and the spirit was moving me. To be a witness to that person. So I witnessed to that person. And she was pretty open. Now pray for that woman. That edifies the body of Christ. Now more and more. I start going to church on Sundays. And I'm seeing people. And I'm seeing what God is doing in their life. The Lord saying to me. What about you? Raise your hand. I'm doing things in your life. So every Sunday after that would come. And my pastor would say, anybody want to share anything? I'd raise my hand. And I would share it. So now when the service was over, I had people coming up to me and say, you edified me. You built me up. That's what it's about. But when I go to visit a church, or if this man wanted me to come and visit his church, and there's no sharing time, I see there's something wrong there. There's miscommunication there. All right. And if there's a separation there and you go to church and you praise God and you worship God and you sing the songs 
and the preacher preaches the word, and then at the end, you're going to sing some songs, pray at the end, and leave, and go your own way. What's that tell you? There's something wrong with that picture. It's like, okay, I'm done. All right, I, I, I'm going home. Uh, I'm going to make some food, but my suit, it goes back on the hanger to next Sunday. So now seven days, six days goes by, and you weren't in that word. You weren't in prayer, and the devil's working on you to keep you out of that. This is what the devil does. He comes to deceive the elect, God's people. He comes as an angel of light with signs and wonders. This is what he does. He wants to take your eyes off of Christ and get focused on this world. And this is a problem today in the body of Christ. I'll give you an example. One time I went to a Christian bookstore. Why am I going to that Christian bookstore? Well, you know, I like listening to God's music. Now, God has all his people with different talents, different categories of music. People know that. Okay, so I went in going to looking for somebody I like. Is that my reason why I'm going there? There's a reason also behind why I'm going there. Yes, I'm going in to buy my CD. But really, what's it come down to? So now I walk in the store. It's a Christian bookstore. There's other believers there. So do I walk in like everybody else? Buy my CD? Pay my bill? Say to the lady, thank you, and I'm out the door? Or am I in there not only to buy that CD, but the Lord is telling me, you're with believers. Talk to them. Find out what they're about. Find out what they need in prayer. Have fellowship with them. And God showed me this. So I started to do it. And the response I got from people was like, you're talking to me? Well, you're a believer. And then another time I went in, and it was like the Lord was showing me something. Don't talk to nobody. Just stand there and watch what they do. And I just seen people going about their business, looking, and buying some, going to pay for it. Somebody else looking around, got this, went down the other aisle, got this, paid their price, and walked out the door. Well, you know what? That's what the unsaved people do when they go to like a Best Buy's. You're with believers. God's showing me. You see what's going on? There's a problem in the body of Christ. My children can't even talk to my other children. So how is you as a believer going to go out and witness to somebody? If you can't talk to somebody in the body of Christ, how are you going to go reach a lost person? It starts, first of all, in the body of Christ. So you have all these things of the work of the flesh. A lot of believers are getting caught up with the flesh. Now, when you have the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, patience. If we live by the Spirit, then let's walk by the Spirit. These are the fruits of the Spirit and not the flesh. So, when it comes to the fruits of the Spirit, if you're growing in God's Word... If you got your eyes occupied on Christ, we're in a race. If you're running your race and you're pressing on and keeping your eyes on Christ and you're focused on Christ and you're in the word and you're praying without ceasing and you're edified and building up the body of Christ and you're out there witnessing for Christ, these fruits of these spirit. You will be living in it. So when somebody comes along and you witness to them or somebody knows you, your friends know you, and they mock you, they put you down, they persecute you, they laugh at you, okay? The Bible said, blessed is the man, woman, who's persecuted for my name's sake. So really what it comes down to, they're not persecuting you. They're persecuting the Lord 
because it's his name. And they don't like his name. So they're going to mock you. They're going to put you down. They're going to laugh at you. Now I know as an entertainer, friends I know, people I know, people I've met, always are trying to put me down. Because see, this is how the devil wants to attack me. The devil wants to attack me to say, hey, can't create. What are you doing? These people are laughing at you. You don't have nothing. Throw in the towel. You're going nowhere. You got all these doors slammed in your face. Where do you actually think you're going? You're not going nowhere. Throw in the towel. Give it up. But what he's telling me is these negative things. But when I look in the Word of God, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm not worried about Satan. Because when I perform, I know God takes over the performance. And if God can reach one to two individuals out there when I perform, I'm doing my job. I'm running my race. I have my eyes on Christ. I want to finish my race. Where Christ will say to me, well done, faithful servant. Look at all the people you brought to me. And I said, well, Lord, when was that? Well, you know when you used to go to the dance clubs and I used to walk on the dance floor and I blew the place apart? Yeah, right, Lord. All the people were watching you. But there were certain ones in that club that started to understand because I was revealing it to them. I remember when you performed over there and you did that show and that show. Yeah, right, Lord. Well, there was 200 people in the audience. And two out of that 200 accepted me as their Savior because I used you. And you planted a seed. And then I worked on that seed. And they became a believer because of what you did. And you showed them that you're different. And they became a believer. So when Satan tries to mock me and put me down, and people try to put me down, you're worthless. What are you doing that? You have no talent. He tries to knock me down and knock me down and knock me out. But the Lord says, get up. You're a warrior in me. Nobody is going to stop you if you have your eyes occupied on me. So we have a lot of problems here in the body of Christ. Joy. What's joy? What's the joy of the Lord? That's where people think, you know, oh, I got the joy of the Lord. So you're walking around and you think you're happy. Well, I'm happy. I praise God. That's not joy. Joy is different than being happy. If you got money and you got security and so you're a believer, you're happy. That's not joy. The joy of the Lord means you're not grieving the Holy Spirit. So if you grieve the Holy Spirit and you're living somewhere in this flesh and the flesh is taking you over, then you're making the Holy Spirit sad. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. There's, there's going to be a conviction in your life somewhere if you're a believer because there's going to be a guilt and you're going to know it. I got to stop doing these things. These things ain't right. I got to get back into fellowship. I got to get back in the word. I got to get back into prayer. I got to be out there for Christ. That's when the Holy Spirit convicts you. Now you're back on your hands and knees. You're praying and you're back in the word. I know. I've been through this. Believe me. Plenty of plenty of times. I mean, there might be two weeks that goes by and there's no word. There's no prayer. There's no fellowship. That's not good. This is what the devil's trying to do in my life. Hey, Ken, sport team on tonight. You like that team or a good college basketball game. Ah, oh, you don't want to miss that. Yeah, you can read the word later. So I watch the college basketball game. After the college basketball game, flip it around. Oh, that's a good movie. So I watch the movie. Then at the end of the day, Satan looks at me and says, you didn't live for Christ today. I got victory over you today. That's what we do. So instead of watching the basketball game and then watching a movie, get in the Word. Learn God's Word. Pray. Pray without ceasing. When you pray, problem, 
in the body of Christ. I've been to different events. There was different people that came up. Now, the one man who was throwing the event says, anybody want to raise their hand to pray? So he says, oh, Pastor so-and-so, you, you can pray. So that individual prays. Now, after that individual was done, another individual raised their hand. Oh, Pastor so-and-so, you can pray. I raised my hand, and he looked at me, and he says, you can't pray. So I says, well, why is that? He says, because you're not a pastor. And I looked at this guy, and I said, listen, you don't know who I am. When God puts on somebody's heart to pray in fellowship, don't stop it. You're quenching the spirit. Don't stop it. It could be another individual. It didn't have to be me. Somebody else could have raised their hand. So just because that other person raised their hand and they're not a preacher, they can't pray to edify the body of Christ? That's wrong. What gives you the right to say that? We playing God. That's wrong. You're not edifying the body of Christ. And then you walk around like you're this big shot. That's not what it's about. You're taking your eyes off of Christ. You're getting focused on you. That's wrong. But anyway, there was a, a one lady who prayed. And it was almost like a ritual. Lord, we're in this tough situation. Could you help me out? Could you help my friends out? Uh, somebody needs this. We need that. Somebody's sick. And the Lord's hearing this, and it's almost like he's sitting in heaven. Uh, that's been like now. How many times have we heard that speech? That's not how you pray. You pray for others and put yourself last. And when you pray, pray in the spirit, not in the flesh, because you all got to understand God works through his word. He works through this book. So when you pray, you're using scriptures. So the more that scriptures feeds into you and the more knowledge you have in scriptures and the more you're being molded and shaped into the image of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit works on you on the inside. So everything that fed into you the Word of God, when you talk to the Lord, when you talk to the Father, what's coming out from your mouth to God is the Word of God. That's how God works. He works through His Word. But if you're not in the Word, and you don't understand the Word, when you pray... It's almost like you're going through a ritual. Now, two months passed. I went to this meeting. The same two individuals were there that I did the event. And that man was there. So at the end, a lady said to me, a Christian woman, said, Ken, could you lead us in a word of prayer at the end? I said, absolutely. So I prayed. When I was done, this lady was like, wow, what a prayer. So I looked at this lady. I said, Deborah. She goes, yeah, what? I said, you don't even know me. I said, what came out of me? She goes, yeah. I said, that I wanted that to edify you because it's the word of God. Don't look at me. Look at the word of God coming out of me. That's how God works. He works through his word. Now. Was I taught this? Absolutely. When I was going to church on Sundays, I go to Grace Bible Church, Fellowship Church, we would do different prayer meetings or a Bible study on Wednesday night. And then we would get into a prayer session. Now, there was individuals who would pray. There would be five, six, seven of us. And then my pastor would say, okay, brother so-and-so, you start and I'll close. Now, in between would be that ear where brother stopped and another brother would pick it up. Now, what I heard in the prayer was individuals, when they were praying and talking to the Lord, it was scriptures. And I was totally amazed. And the one man who was praying and he was using the word of God, it just flew and flown right out of him. And I was like, wow, that's what prayer is all about. 
So now, when I talk to the Lord, praying to the Lord, it's all scriptures. I don't want my flesh to get in the way. Because the works of the flesh, I'm telling you, as a believer, these will hit you. They will hit you. Don't say they won't. You got to live in the fruit of the Spirit. You're going to go through sufferings, the fruit of the Spirit says. But you're going to have peace when you go through these sufferings. Be gentle unto people, the fruit of the Spirit says. Show kindness. Be good. Patience. That's a toughie. A lot of people, even myself, we get very impatient. I'll give you an example. You tie your shoe. You tied it too tight. Now, at the end of the day, you want to take off your shoe. You want to take off your sneaker. Okay? You tied it so tight that you're trying to unloosen it, and it's too tight, and it goes into another knot. So are you patient and try to work on that knot and gradually make your move where it gets loose and then you can loosen the knot and take off your sneaker? Or is it tied too tight and you're trying to loosen it and now it's getting to you, so now you're impatient, you get mad, and what do you do? You get the scissor and you cut it. And you're mad. And it's almost like you throw your sneaker. All right? That's impatient. Here's something God taught me. The Lord taught me this. I'm walking with the Lord. God showed me something. <laughs> you think you got it? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to put you through a situation. I go to a quick check. I get what I got to get. Seven people in line. You want to talk about trying to be patient. Seven people in line. Turns out. Young girl behind the cash register. Might have been a new person working there. But you can tell she was uncomfortable, nervous. Patience. Learn patience. Learn patience. I'm in the line with everybody else. People are talking about her. How come this line ain't moving? How come there's not another cash register that can take care of other people on this line? Why is this moving slow? Start talking about her now. And I'm feeding off of this and it's feeding into me. And I take on their conversation that I'm impatient too. Now I pay my bill. What do I do? I storm out the door. Ah, that girl didn't know what she's doing. That's being impatient. So the next time that came up, God's going to show me patience. He's showing me when I'm online. When I'm online. There's 10 people online. Are you going to do the same thing? And be impatient? Or are you going to stand there and wait your turn and talk to me and renew your mind in Christ and think on heavenly things? So I waited in line and I paid my bill. Now I leave the store and I'm like, praise God. That's a form of being patient. So now when you're in the word and you're in prayer without ceasing, and when it comes to that word patient, and you learn, and you learn how to be patient, and you overcome that through that situation of that day, there's going to be other days where it's going to come up on you again. Because you're not going to walk into a store at times, and there's two people there. Yeah, that happens. But there's going to come times when there's seven to ten people in line. Are you going to learn how to be patient? Because once you can learn how to be patient through that situation, then when other things come up, you're going to be patient. But we, believers, non-believers. You see, non-believers, a lot of them, are un, uh, they're they're impatient, okay? They want, like, I got my food, got a microwave, stick it in. I want to eat in two minutes. Why don't you cook your food on the stove? Be patient. How come that's not boiling fast enough? I'm starving. You're very impatient. You have to learn that. And as you as a believer in being in the Word of God, in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, 
You're filled up with the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you. So do you learn from him and apply this in your life? Or are you going to be impatient? So patience is very big with the Lord. Then it says temper. Do you have a bad temper? Do you get angry easy? Or are you down to earth? That's another big thing. With the unsaved, they get angry. They're under wrath. It says it right here. In the flesh. Full of rage. They're violent. They don't like you. They want to do something to you. You as a believer, do you have the different attitude? Do you have love? Do you have peace with these people? Long suffering. Are you suffering because of Christ? Are you coming out of this world and keeping your eyes on Christ? Anybody who's a believer who's growing in Christ and running the race and has their eyes focused on Christ and renewing their mind on heavenly things is going to suffer in this world because the devil is going to bring people into your life to make you miserable because they are miserable. So these are things that we have to learn. You have to be in the Word. You have to be in prayer. You have to be in fellowship. And you also have to be under good teaching because we're under grace today. But like I said, a lot of these preachers are mixing grace with the law. That's not for today. We're under the dispensation of grace. But we'll see, even being under the dispensation of grace, we take advantage of that. So we're like, ah, oh, you know, I should do this for the Lord today. I should be in the Word. I should be in prayer or listen to a preacher, or listen to God's music. Well, I'm under grace, so, you know, I'll watch the TV. That's gone. The day's over. You did nothing. You did nothing for the Lord. And then another day comes. Oh, yeah, I'll get in a word, and, and you did nothing. All of a sudden, it's a week. It's a two weeks. It's three weeks. It's a month. It's two months. You're out of fellowship. Uh, three months, four. All of a sudden, six months goes by, and you're backsliding. Instead of going forward, running the race, you're going backwards. What are you doing? I know. <laughs> I've been through this plenty of times. In fact, it's times right now. You know, I make charts. And I want to go according to my charts. So I can put, okay, in the morning, I was in Galatians chapter 5. I studied for a half hour. Then I prayed. I pray for the people in the body of Christ because what a preacher I learned on the radio said, he doesn't even pray for himself. I'm like, wow. He says, others pray for me. So there's no need for me to pray for myself. That's pretty, like, exciting. This man doesn't even pray for himself. All right? So anyway, uh, now I pray 10 minutes. Okay. Now, I go to my chart and say, morning time, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, prayer, 10 minutes. Uh, lunchtime, uh, 10 minutes, 3 minutes, prayer. Nighttime, half hour, half hour prayer. Now I look at the end of the day and say, okay, I spent an hour and a half with the Lord. An hour and a half is better than nothing. 15 minutes is better than nothing. So I make my chart and I'm doing good in my chart. Now I think I'm feeling great. Then all of a sudden it's like, all right, next day comes. Nothing. 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 Ah, preacher here. Prayer here. Nothing. Ah, Lord's music here. And all of a sudden two weeks go by and I look at my chart and it's like, what's up with my chart? If I look at my chart and two weeks went by, it was like three days I was in the Word. Yeah, I prayed here and there. I listened to the preachers. What am I learning? What am I doing? I have to be in the Word. Christians have to be in the Word. Because the Bible says put the full armor of God on. Because you don't know when your enemy is going to come and attack you. So be equipped beforehand so when he comes with his strategies 
in his way, you won't be deceived. See? And we as believers are deceived. There's so many different situations in life that we go through. You can do examples of stories from people. Do we learn? Do we learn the word? Do we know how to witness to people? Are we praying? See, there was one preacher on TV that taught me, and he's also on the radio. He says, when was the time that you ever laid back in bed, your comfort zone, and everything's quiet, and you're just going to talk to the Lord? You forget about you. You forget about Christians. You forget about unsaved people. And you talk to God on how awesome he is. You talk to God on he's the creator. You talk to God that he created the heavens and the earth. You talk to God that he's all powerful. You talk to God and you marvel at God, how he created the stars. You talk to God when you say to him, when I see that dawn come up and that sun rises, that's awesome. You created that. You talk to God when you wake up in the morning and you see a blue sky with white clouds and you say, how awesome a creator you are. You talk to God that underneath it, when that sun goes down, there's a lesser light and up in the sky becomes nighttime and hidden under them clouds with stars that appear. That's awesome. That's God. He's your creator. Do you talk to God how awesome he is? Or do you take your eyes off of God and get focused on you? Okay, the body, Christ, unsaved people, that's great. But do you ever take the time to just talk to the Lord that he's the greatest creator forever? You talk to God how he saves somebody and he's working in their life and where he brings them. Do you talk to God about the throne he sits on and angels hover around him and say, glory, glory is the God almighty. Do you talk to God and thank God that Jesus walked this earth and paid the price for your sins? And when he shed his blood, that's the forgiveness of God. Do you talk to God that he gives you this free gift his grace, something you don't deserve. Do you talk to God? When God sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees Christ in your place. Do you talk to God about these things? This is God's love. This is God's forgiveness. Do you talk to God that God one day is going to make you like Christ? See, if you take a loaf of bread, and you got the top, you got the middle, you got the end. So let's just say, the top is God, the middle is the Spirit, and you got the three pieces in Jesus, okay? You are in that loaf of bread. You are part of that loaf of bread. You're not the beginning, you're not the middle, and you ain't the end, but you're in that loaf. God is creating us to be like Christ. So he's recreating you to be like Christ. He's turning you into the image of Christ. This is not, this is what the devil does not want you to understand. And this is what he tries to do by you walking in the flesh. Now, if you're unsaved, you're walking in the flesh. It says the works of the flesh in Galatians 5.19. These are the things you do. This is the unnatural man. You do this. Because you're not saved. Sin, flesh, devil, have you. So, somebody who's lost, they're blind. They don't understand. They can't see. But you as a believer are the light of God, and you're supposed to go to them and show them you are different than them. So, if you're hanging out with your friends, and they're smoking a joint, 
Do you smoke a joint with them? Or do you say, no, I refuse it. So now when you refuse it, your friends look at you and say, wow, what's up with that guy? How come he didn't smoke? How come he didn't party with us? All right? They might mock you and put you down. But when they're by themselves, then they're thinking. Now, do you go to a bar? I'll tell you this one situation I went through. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing the drugs. The Lord took me up all in. I call up my friend and I say to him, what are you doing? It's nothing. So you want to get a coffee? Yeah, I come and get you. End up going to a restaurant. I didn't think I was going to the restaurant. Go to the restaurant. I have a coffee. He says, I got to run late, late. So one of our friends walks in the door and he says to him, hey, Ann, you drive Kenny home? He goes, yeah, I'll drive him home. So my friend leaves. Now I'm with my other friend. We're leaving. He says to me, Ken, is it right if I go to this bar, I got to talk to one of my friends or I'll drive you home. Now, I could have turned around and says, no, nah, drive me home. I don't go to a bar. No way. Now, God delivered me from the booths. So could I walk in that bar? Absolutely. What am I going to order? If I'm going to order a beer or have a shot, I'm not walking in that bar. But if I'm walking in that bar and a lady said, what would you like? I have a soda, or I have a club soda, or I have a water. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. That's where Christians get off that thing, too. Okay, so now I'm there. There's this man sitting next to me, and he says to me, Wow, you don't drink? So I start witnessing to him. Well, you know, I have problems with drugs and drinking. I don't do them no more. Oh, what were you, in AA? I said, no. He said, well, how'd you get off them? So I presented the message of salvation to him. So he's hearing me, and then all of a sudden he says to me, he says, you know, brother, listening to you is like, wow, you make a lot of sense. I said, really? So he goes, yeah. He goes, my mother's a believer and my grandmother's a believer. And I'm like, wow, look at this. This is amazing. So I'm talking to him. So I said, where are they? And they live down south. I says, well, what are you doing up here? He says, well, I've been through some traveling. He says, I do construction. I says, okay. He says, I've been working up here. But I lost my job. Having problems with my alimony and stuff like that. So I says, oh, okay. So I said, do you get in the word? He says, well, my mother gave it to me. My grandmother gave it to me. But no, not really. He says, but I understand what you're talking about because they already told me that. I says, okay. So I said, well, let me give you a tip. And he says, what's that? I says, there's a Christian bookstore around here. He said, I said, why don't you get a Bible like tomorrow because it's too late now and start feeding in the word and I'll pray for you. So this man says, well, that's a great idea. He says, you know what I was going to do? I said, what's that? He said, if you did not sit next to me? I said, yes. He says, I was going to go home. I had a gun loaded and I was going to blow my brains out. Now, you are telling me God did not put me there to talk to this individual? And this was in a bar. So when Christians come across and say, hey, what are you going in that bar? All right. Listen, if you don't drink and you don't do drugs and if God tells you to go to the bar and you're going to have a water and you're going to have a soda, walk in that bar. If you're too weak and if temptation's too strong, don't walk in that bar. But if you walk in that bar and you're strong in the Lord and you don't drink no more, you are going to be sitting next to her people around you that are very lonely people. That's why they are sitting in the bar. Why do you think they're in that bar? They drown their sorrows and misery in that bottle. So you see when happy time comes, happy hour, they all get happy. Because the, the drinks are cheaper. They're half price or cheaper. So they have an hour. Friends I hung out with would, would line up the drinks and drink as much as possible before that, I, that hour is done. They're getting happy. Let's be happy. They're drowning their problems in the alcohol. They're miserable people because they don't know Christ. How do I know this? I lived there. I was drunk. I went in the bars. I did all my drugs, my hard drugs. I did it all. I seen it all. 
I've done shows in the body of Christ, outside the body. I've seen it all. It's all there. So God is showing me, look, you've seen it. I've shown you. You live there. Are you going to grow? Are you going to be in prayer? Are you going to be in fellowship? Are you going to be a witness for me? Are you going to edify the body of Christ? Are you going to edify the body of Christ? Or are you going to live in the flesh? And see your friends, people you met, your family, your relatives, people in your neighborhood. And, and see all them people on their way to hell. What are you doing? And that's my message to the believers today. Because there's too much confusion that's going on in the body of Christ. So we have to live by the fruits of the Spirit. Now how do we live by the fruits of the Spirit? Ask God to fill you up every day with the Holy Spirit. Now, once you were filled up, your cup will overflow. You have to be filled up every single day with the Holy Spirit. Just don't wake up and think like, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be in the Word, and I'm going to be in prayer. Okay? You're going to fall because you're dealing with the flesh. Your flesh. You're dealing with people. And most of all, you got Satan and the demons that are on you 24-7. So these are the changes we need in the body of Christ. Forgive one another. Bless one another. Edify one another. Motivate one another. Don't think about money. Don't think what people got. God will supply your needs. If God makes you a millionaire, not wrong with it. Bless other people. Don't keep it to yourself because there'll be a time you're going to lose it all. And you're going to be in the flesh like people are in the flesh. You see, people that live in the flesh, they're lost people. But you can be a believer and still be walking in the flesh. You're not going to grow. And you're not going to have strong fellowship and you're not going to edify and motivate the body of Christ. I did a show one time. When I was done, I got to speak to the people. After I was done, a couple days later, I ran into the brother in Christ who put the event on. And he said, okay, hey, remember what you did last week? I said, yeah. He goes, you led two young kids to Christ. And I was like, really? He goes, absolutely. He says, what you did and what you talked about opened their eyes. They accepted Christ. So I look at that and say, praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm just an instrument. I'm just a tool. God works through me. I motivate the body of Christ. Another time I did a show and I had got to speak. And I said to the young kids out there and the believers sitting there. I says, look, if God gives you a talent. For example, you like to build models. I know one young kid, he builds models. He builds the planes. And he's very good. And he's doing it. I encouraged this kid, and I said, give God the glory. Because once you give God the glory, and you're being a witness for God through what you're doing, watch where he brings you. Because you're giving God the glory. If you have another young kid, and that young kid likes to draw. But people are putting him down. I said to him, you draw. Give God the glory. Keep your eyes on Christ. Be focused. Be in the word. Be in prayer. Be in fellowship. Edify. Motivate the body of Christ. Be a witness for Christ. Do it for Christ. And when you're drawn, give him the glory. God can use you and bring you to a higher level where what is going on that picture, you're not doing no more. The Holy Spirit is doing it because God's going to use you as a testimony through your artwork. So do it and do it to God's glory. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But we're supposed to build each other up in the body of Christ. In closing, yes, we are at the end of the last days. It's all here. You got your weather changes. You got wars and rumors of wars. 
You got the President of the United States that's going to sit down with the Pope to go to Israel to make a peace treaty. We're there. We are there. The Antichrist is ready to come on the scene. It's all set. All, everything is in place. All the pieces are in place. All the furniture is in place. The curtain's about to open up. And once that curtain opens up, we are out of here as believers. Now, when you're at the judgment seat of Christ, Christ is going to say to you, what did you do for me? Your sins have been paid for. They're done. God does not remember your sins no more. But God's going to look at you, all right, and say, where's the fruit? Show me the fruit. Who did you bring to me? See, look at here. Who's here that you brought to me? Where's the fruit? Hey, when you were on that corner and there were three of your friends and they knew you were a believer, why'd you change the subject? How come you weren't bold for me? How come you didn't stand for me? Hey, can create when you did that show. How come you didn't talk about me? This is what it's all about, people, bringing people to Christ. You growing in Christ. You edifying the body of Christ. You building people up in the body of Christ. You motivating the body of Christ. Teach the word of God. Teach people how to pray. Teach them. I was taught. I'm applying. I want my eyes on Christ. That's the bottom line. So I want to thank you and I pray for everybody. In Jesus' name.